We are now joined by number 13 ranked USC lightweight Bailey Darius, and we'll take our first set of questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cape Press. All right. Hey, Benil, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Um, obviously, this one's a rematch. How do you feel both yourself and Diego have changed since the last fight? Well, obviously, he's improved a lot. You can see it in his stand-up and his uh, scrambles. He's um, He hasn't been as active as I have, but uh, in every fight, he's won, uh, you know, since his loss to Dustin. So I'm... Uh, I'm pretty impressed with them. I'm I'm excited about the rematch, and I'm really motivated to make sure we don't go one and one. So that's where I'm at. I know the back end of 2020 was frustrating in terms of getting back to the cage, you know, with the cancellation, Charles and everything. So when you're in that position, what, I guess, how do you stay positive? Obviously, you want to stay ready, but then emotionally, how do you keep yourself from feeling that frustration showing up to get on the grind without a fight? Mm, okay, so this 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 is something I've actually been thinking about because uh, it's good to know your uh, your desires and what is your motivation, and you don't want things to cloud it. So, you know, I, one day after my fight with Scott, they called me about Charles. They sent me a text, and I said yes. And um, I got back into camp, so I, I didn't really get a, a vacation or a break. And then he pulled out, but I thought maybe we we're going to go back in. Uh, so I just kept waiting, kept waiting, kept waiting, and and never happened. And then eventually I got, I got Diego. So it was like a constant go. And a lot of people have asked what you just asked. What, what keeps you motivated? And and I've thought about this too. And ultimately, I believe my talents are God given, and if they're God given, they need to be used for God's purpose. I don't, I don't have. I don't have any plans to um, slow down just because of an opponent. Uh, whether it's Charles, Diego, or whatever, the fight gets canceled, doesn't. I want to make my talents as sharp as possible and multiply them as much as I can and then hand them back to the Lord, my Lord and Savior. So that's that's kind of my mindset. I, I've been given something. I want to add on to it and give it back as a gift. I understand. Um, my final question, lightweight is always competitive, but it's safe to say there's a lot more going on lately, right? After, Definitely. you know, with everything going on, Poirier, McGregor, all these other guys, what do you think should happen next? And for yourself, what would you like to see? Because you're on a great run looking to break in there yourself. You know, God willing, uh, the fight goes well with Diego. I, uh, I, I win and nobody's injured and it's all good. Um, I would like someone top five, obviously, top three, whatever. But, you know, I said this my last in interview after the Scott fight. I said, man, I'm not begging anymore. I'm tired of it. I kept asking for names and kept asking for names. And after a while, uh, I started to feel like I was, <laughs> I was like, begging. <laughs> I was like, hey, like, can I please have some bread or something? I was like, no, nah, I'm sick of it. They're going to, whoever they put in front of me, I'm going to treat like I'm fighting the champion and I'm going for the kill. So it's that simple. If you want to put a new guy in front of me, man, get, guess what? When I beat him, he's going to be very discouraged. You want to put a veteran in front of me, he's going to get beat. You want to put the champ in front of me, doesn't matter. He's going to get beat. I am the guy right now. And that's just how I look at it. Hey, thank you, Benil, and good luck. Thank you. We'll take our next set of questions from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Hey, Benil, uh, I know it's been six years since you fought Diego the first time, but what do you remember most about that fight? Things that I remember. He caught me in uh, back of my head in, in the with a hook round three that, that had me a little bit hurt, so I, I do remember that. So I know he's got power. I, uh, I'm aware of that. I, I remember the fact that, you know, I had him in so many bad positions, but he never really got tired. He could push, uh, good cardio, and... Man, he's not an easy guy to finish. Normally, if I get somebody down for more than a round, I, I get a finish, and I wasn't even close to finishing him. So I'm uh, I'm looking to show that I've improved a lot more in this fight and get a finish. Well, it, you can't answer my question, but I'll ask it anyways. You know, when you talk about improving upon that fight, you know, do you feel like that is kind of like the way you can kind of grade where you're at now? If you can go out and finish or dominate, you know, Diego Fajera in this fight, do you feel like that's a, a big statement for you in this fight? 
Yeah, that would be exactly what I need to do, either dominate or finish. The, the thing, if you watch the first fight, it was 30-27, but every round was so close. You know, I, I won every round by, like, by an inch or by a takedown or something like that. So, like, um, it's it's not an easy fight. So I, I, I recognize that now, and I'm, 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 I'm uh, excited for it, and I don't want want it to be the last fight like like the last fight i don't want it to be close I, I i want people to say why did we even match these guys up i want i want sean to be like okay i shouldn't have done that like that's how i want this fight to go with that being said you talked about kind of the shift in mentality because you had been calling for so many top 10 guys as you try to work your way up the rankings because you've been on this big streak right now and you finally get a top 10 opponent. It's a guy you fought already. <laughs> was there any, were you ever like shaking your head a little bit or at least you know, was slightly disappointed this ended up being the fight only because everything you've been doing, just trying to get a top 10 opponent and you get one, but now it's a rematch. You're you you're 100% on, on point here. I wouldn't say I was uh, disappointed, but I was shaking my head and like a little bit confused uh, and, and frustrated. I'm like, we've already fought. We're both on, on, on like a good streak. Why not? fight maybe closer to the title or for for the title because if you think about it like uh there's a lot of guys who are one and one or own one uh two and one in in the in the top five or the top seven or top six whatever you want or whatever the number is so why not each of us get a piece a piece of those guys uh, but instead we fight each other and and like those guys just keep fighting uh in between themselves so I, I didn't understand the choice, but I said, I, I get it. Uh, let, let's just go. Uh, and you, you said that, you know, at this point, you're just going to yeah. fight who they put in front of you. But I know there has been a little bit of frustration from some of the guys in that top, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10 range where you're at. That, you know, right now we're all talking about, is it going to be Dustin and Connor 3? Is it going to be, you know, uh, Michael Chandler and, you know, Charles Oliveira? Is it going to be Justin Gage? We're talking about these same four and five guys. You had Charles Oliveira. Unfortunately, that fight fell apart. But would you like to see the matchmakers, you know, kind of mix things up a little bit? You know, you get a Justin Gaethje, or maybe you do get a Charles Oliveira instead of, you know, we're only talking about those top three or four guys, you know, determining who's going to fight for the title. So, in my mind, uh, uh, a good scenario would be, you know, see how things go this week. And uh, if I win or Diego wins, one of us gets to fight either Charles or one of us gets to fight Chandler. And then um, maybe just have Justin fight uh, Dustin Poirier and then go from there. I mean, I get Connor is, uh, is a big name and he brings a lot of uh, pay-per-view buys. He's a star power and, and all that. I get it's good, but if you want to move the division forward, Justin and Dustin Poirier make sense. Um, I think... Um, I think Chandler for me or, or uh, Oliveira makes sense. And then, um, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. I, I can't really put too many other guys together. The last one, I'll just kind of follow up on that because right now we know Khabib is retired. Do you think it should be Dustin and Justin for the title? Would that be the ideal scenario? I, I think so. I think, like, they had an awesome fight. Like, they had a I, – I think it was a fight of the year candidate. So, like, they had a great fight, man. Uh, redo it. Let, uh, you know, they were both uh, interim champions. It's like you have two interim champions, so it means one guy should, you know, fight to be a champion. For, uh, I, I just think so. If, if Habib's at, out of the picture and these are the two, uh, two top guys, have him fight, get it over with, so we can move the division forward. Like, just because they get to become champion, doesn't affect me really. I'm still gonna go out there and I'm gonna hunt everybody one at a time and eventually get the belt. So why why try to like sneak in there and get the belt early? Just just let's get this done, man. <laughs> Thank you, Benil. We'll take our next set of questions from Nikita Gorshny with Sport Express. Hey, big pleasure to speak to you. Hey, bro, how are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? Great, great. Benio, only two guys right now in UFC have four fight winning streaks consisting on finishes. It's you and Francis Ngano. It's crazy that lightweight and heavyweight both in one statistical hit uh, parade, you know. Uh, can you explain how it's happened that you starting finishing people uh, in that way? Because you have never had two knockouts win in a row. Yes, you have now two knockouts win in a row and you never had it before. What's happened when That's you... Why you became so killer. 
So, you know, I started martial arts when I was 18. I didn't start when I was a young kid. And the, I think the difference you see now is just me improving. I showed up in the UFC when I was 24 years old. I mean, that's just six years of training. I've, I've, I know that. I've had that in the back of my head all this time. I, I never got to the UFC and said, okay, I've made it. I got enough skills. The reason why you're seeing me change is because I recognize I, I'm very insecure when it comes to my skills. So I'm constantly trying to add to my skills so that, you know, there's improvement every fight. And, and, and that's really the most important thing. I have to keep growing. The day where I get up and say, I got enough skills, I just need to get in shape and fight, is the, the day I retire, man. I won't want to be here anymore. I love fighting. I love, love martial arts. I love I love testing myself, and I want to continue to do that. And uh, if if I'm not growing, I'm not really testing myself. I'm just I'm just going through the motions. So I think the reason why I've improved is because I'm insecure. Uh, Benil, George St. Pierre once said that he enjoys submission more than knockout win. Uh, what about you? You prefer submission enjoy more or knockout? So knockouts are weird, man, because so, sometimes you land and it doesn't even feel like you hit anything. And uh, my last two fights have been knockouts. And, you know, everybody's like, why do you walk away? Why don't you just follow up? And, and I, to be honest, I don't, it's not like I get a lot of knockdowns in, in training or knockouts in, in fights. So it's, it's new to me. To, to say I enjoy one over the other, I, I don't know. But I do enjoy, like, for example, clean submission. If I can jump on something and, and I've, I, I think I would probably say submission still. I'm, I'm still, uh, I still favor submissions, but it's pretty close. For example, like the, the thing that happened with Dober, that move I've never done before. The first time I ever did that move in that situation, in that way, was with Dober. So for me, it was like, what the heck just happened? You know, can, can, and then I went home and started to practice to see if this move works on a regular basis because typically, I would get it in a different situation. I, I wouldn't have it like that. And it, it's, it, I, I still enjoyed that part of the game. I, I enjoyed that part of the puzzle. So uh, I, I think I'm still a little bit more into submissions. Uh, Benil, after your last win with Spin Backfist, you told amazing story how the friend of your son uh, wrote you in direct and uh, asked you to perform this technique. So this time this boy uh, writes something to you and uh, asks you to perform anything. Uh, I think he was still saying back fist, spinning back fist, but, um, no, Billy, uh, Billy, uh, that was, that was very specific. He messaged me the week of my fight and he was like, you got to do a spinning back fist in the video game. Uh, is it the, uh, what is it? The EA or whatever, uh, video, uh, video game. He's like, you're so good at it. It's like your best move. I'm like, that's weird. I barely do spinning back fists in my fights. So uh, he hasn't messaged me anything new, but if he does... I'll let you guys know after the fight. <laughs> so, Benio, thank you very much. Big pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. We'll take our next question from Augusto Niesgay with Bordeaux and a minute. Hey, Benio, how are you? Good, and yourself? Fine, thank you. Benio, a few days ago, I, I have interviewed Diego and Diego Ferreira, and he, he said the, the same that, that you were saying a, a few moments ago. That is, it's really hard for guys like like you, like like him, with with long fight, uh, winning fight streaks, to to get the, the 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 big fights at the big names. What do you think uh, that that happens? Um, politics. I think the answer is politics. I think um, you know the UFC has to do what's best for the UFC. The fighters have to do what's best for the fighters, and you know somewhere in, in between things get lost. And um, we kind of forget the, uh, the sports aspect of it, like to see who's the best fighter, who's the best contender. But we, in reality, we're just trying to uh, low risk, high reward. That's what it is. Everybody's trying to look for low risk and high reward. And, you know, the, the guy who stood out for me um, to kind of emulate is Max Holloway. I think he had like a 10 fight win streak before he fought uh, he fought um, uh, Jose Aldo for for the belt. So, man, how am I going to sit here and complain when that guy had to fight 10 times in a row and have awesome performances every time? So, I'm 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 not I'm not going to sit here and complain. I'm just going to 
Just gonna look to kind of maul everybody I see. And how many fights do you think you should win to get the, the shot? You know, that's a Are question I need to ask you guys. That's a question I should be asking you guys because I'm just a dumb fighter. You guys are the experts in this game. So I, I, I honestly want to pick your brains. I want to be like, how many more fights? Who I got to fight? What I got to do? So if you guys have an answer for me, please send a message. Call me. I don't know. Just let me know. Okay. And, and talking about, about the fight, uh, Benil, Diego told me that that he 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 loves how you improve, especially your Muay Thai in this in these few years since your first fight. Which aspect do you think is the, the, the most dangerous aspect of, of Diego's fighting game? Diego, uh, uh, volume, pressure, scrambles. Like, uh, and it'll go with, uh, I'll start with uh, pressure, then volume, then scrambles. I think though, that's, what he, that's what makes Diego so good. Okay, uh, and which type of fight do you imagine on Saturday? Where are going to be the keys for your victory? I'm... In, in, I've never been in a fight where I said I'm not going to do a takedown. I've never been in a fight where I don't focus on grappling. There's no difference here. Every fight, I will try to take you down, and I will try to just suffocate you. That's that's my goal. I um, My stand-up, I'm not saying it's a second, but my grappling has always been number one, and I don't want to forget that. That's my roots, and I want to stick with it. So whether it's Diego or even if it was Habib or, or let's say someone who's a great wrestler, great jiu-jitsu, it doesn't matter. Grappling for me comes first and the, and then striking. Okay, and, and if everything goes according to the plan, there are no major injuries, when would you like to come back to the, to the octagon? Great question. So here's the thing. My wife is 19 and a half weeks pregnant and we're gonna have a baby in June. So, at once I have a baby, you're not gonna see me around for a little bit. I'm not. <laughs> okay. I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time with my girl. Uh, so, with that being said, I'd like to get in there uh, either April, late April, or May. So, I, uh, if you know, if, if I want to fight three times this year, and I, I enjoy fighting three times this year, I would like to jump back in. God willing, I'm healthy jump back in either April or May, and then take some time, spend with, uh, spend that time with my daughter, and then fight at the end of the year. Sounds great. Congratulations for, for your daughter, and we'll have a Saturday. Thank you. We'll take our last set of questions from Cote Cruz. Hey, Benil, how you doing? Good, and yourself? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for your time today, sir. Um, you're celebrating seven years in the organization this year. Is there any particular memories that stand out in your time with the UFC? Two years I went without a uh, victory. I had a loss, a draw, and a loss. It was the hardest time of my life, but at the same time, it made me who I am right now. So it, uh, it was so bitter, but right now it's sweet. So. Uh, it's the thing that stands, uh, stands out the most because because it was the lowest of the lows, I enjoy the highs so much more. I, I appreciate this moment so much more and, you know, whatever comes next. And I was telling people, now that I've had, uh, I'm going to have a baby girl, I'm like at the top of the mountain. I can't think of a, I, I can't think of anything greater. So they're like, oh yeah, so if you win, it's going to be just more, right? I was like, man, win or lose. I'm not, I don't think I'm getting over this. This is it right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure what's going to get me to be more happy than this. So that's, that's, what, I, uh, that's what I'm thinking right now is uh, I had the lowest of the lows, and right now I'm at the highest of the highs. So I'm just looking forward to Saturday. Well, speaking about Saturday, you, start, you stated in an interview that you don't fear Diego's ability to scramble, that you'll be dominant in those positions. Do you see that uh, this fight is going to get to that road? That's not exactly what I said. I didn't say I don't fear it. I fear it, but I have to go into it. If I walk away from it, if I avoid it, is that's when I'll lose. It's Bravery isn't the lack of fear. Bravery is, is con confronting fear. So I do fear his ability. I do fear his ability to scramble, his volume, his, his, uh, his pressure. I fear all that. I understand the man works hard every day. So it's, it's not that I don't fear him. It's that I will overcome that fear come Saturday, and I will conquer. 
Well, this fight is a rematch. You had your chance to fight Diego a few years ago with a decision coming your way. Do you believe the Diego that you faced back in 2014 has evolved to meet you on Saturday night? Yeah, I think he's evolved 1,000%. I think he has he has coaching uh, and he has a new staff as far as who takes care of him. And it looks like they're, they're a very tight group. And you can see the improvements everywhere. Uh, and I'm grateful for that. I wouldn't want to fight the same Diego. Because if I fought the same Diego, I'd be fighting. It'd be basically uh, that, that fight from before. And I don't want that. I want someone new. I'm fighting a new person. This Diego today is not Diego of, of 2000, I think it was 2014. It's not, it's not him. It's just a different guy. Uh, you can tell. Uh, mentally, physically, spiritually, he's, 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 he's a tougher guy. He's, he's improved in all aspects. So I, I don't even, I, sometimes I don't even think of this fight as a rematch, to be honest with you. Well, you've been on a tear the last two years, five wins, no losses, four finishes. You've been a staple for this division the last seven years. For a lot of fighters, the results would reflect in an eventual title eliminator or higher profile fights. I know you've been asked this throughout the day, but why do you think this hasn't happened for you yet? Well, we have some of the most uh, eccentric characters in the 155 division. Uh, we have some of the most popular guys in the 155 division. So you have to take all the things into consideration. Like I said earlier, it's about, it's about risk and it's about reward. And the UFC does what it, uh, what it can to make the highest rewards and take the lowest risks. And the same thing goes with uh, the athletes. If you think about it in terms of pay-per-view, in terms of fans, in terms of all that, I am a high risk. I don't bring a lot of, I don't bring in the big numbers. Maybe one day, maybe not. I, it's, it doesn't matter. But like, I get, I understand why the UFC does that. I, and I don't, I don't hold it against them. I, it, plus, you know, once you beat everybody, the, uh, there's no getting around it. But I, this is why I think it, it is because the UFC is basically uh, making smart decisions. They're they're making the smartest decisions they can for themselves, and and, and as am I. So I think that's why you guys haven't seen me in a title eliminator <coughs> or in a um, or in a maybe uh, main event yet. But eventually, yeah. Hopefully, the time will come. Well, Benil, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Congratulations on the baby for you and your wife. Best of luck on your fight this Saturday. Thank That's you. all we have for you today, Benil. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo.